I, I, I really can't believe this next story, but how about this, fellas? Nick Saban almost retired 10, almost 10 years ago, if you can actually believe this, according to a new book that is out by John Talty. And, of course, he was on the College Football Daily with our own Brandon Marcel. You can check that out as well on wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on our YouTube channel. But he wrote a book about Nick Saban, and he said he almost retired, Saban, that is, after the famous kick six game in 2013 against Auburn, where Chris Davis took back the missed field goal all the way back for a touchdown in the Iron Bowl victory for Auburn nine years ago. Carl, I'll come to you first. I mean, can you actually believe this story? It's not to uh, discredit Talty any, in any sort of fashion, but Nick Saban retiring after a rivalry loss to Auburn, especially after what it spearheaded over the next five-plus years. Well, I can tell you what. I had made a bet that game that Alabama would win easy, and I ended up having to buy some guys 200 wings and two cases of beer. So I almost retired after that, too. I wasn't <laughs> making much money back then. But what I will say about that time and period – Nick Saban was probably being really frustrated at the way college football was going. He was complaining a lot around then about the no huddle offenses and the way that things were changing in offensive football and losing is tough on coaches. When you lose a game, especially games of that magnitude, it makes you reevaluate everything. So I'm sure that in the moments after that game, he probably had some thoughts, but obviously he came back and ran the table for quite a bit time after that. Yeah, I'm not really buying it, to be honest with you. I think Nick Saban's a football coach. Uh, he does great in the media, and you see him on ESPN and different shows uh, here and there when, when he's not coaching. But I, I think, you know, every single person goes through things in their life where they have changes, they have opportunities to do things different. Uh, Nick Saban, I'm sure, has had a million opportunities to – to do things. I know that the Texas job was a, was a really popular thing that was talked about. And uh, obviously it was a, was a big letdown for Texas, not getting him. But I think Saban's a football coach, you know, he's the greatest that, that ever played. That's what he wants to, that, that's his legacy. And that's what he does. And I think when something like that happens, you have to kind of question, you know, what's, what's going on in your life and, and what the next step is. But Ultimately, that's, you know, he decided to come back to Alabama, reevaluated what was going on and dominated. Can you imagine a bunch of oil guys and boosters in Texas trying to tell Nick Saban how to run a football program? Nick Saban is the king of the state of Alabama. He's the most powerful figure. He's more powerful than the governor. Everything that happens in the state of Alabama goes through Nick Saban. And I remember Texas wanted them really bad, but I never could see that happening. Yeah, it was a... It was a big, big, big mistake by Texas by not getting that done. And, and the rest is history as he's gone on to, to win multiple national championships at Alabama since. Does something like that, fellas, spearhead Nick Saban's efforts to recruit even better than he usually did, to coach better than he usually did? I mean, we've seen him since that 2013 game against Auburn. He's, he's been the best coach in college football, not that, he already, not, not, not that he wasn't already, but the fact that he just seemed to get better after that game does something like that spearhead a coach saying, you know what, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and now adapt to maybe a new wave of college football? Carl, I'll come to you first. Yeah, definitely. It, it motivates you. If you're a winner, he's a winner. He's been the standard of winning in all of college sports, not just football. Nobody has been more consistent than Nick Saban at winning. Nobody has been more adaptable. Nobody has had to replace the type of staff that he's had to replace. Look at how many of his guys have left. Look how many went on to become head coaches. Jimbo has won a national championship. Kirby's won a national championship. It's just consistent turnover, but nothing but greatness has come out of Tuscaloosa, and it's all attributed to him. It's all about evolution. You know, when, when you're winning and doing well, the, the natural instinct is to just keep doing what you're doing and not learn, not grow. Nick Saban ha has shown that he is, has the ability to learn and grow and evolve better than anybody in college football or anybody in sports for that matter. So I think that's the key to success in life and in football. You've got to continue to evolve and grow and, and master your craft because things are always changing and you have to, to be able to have that ability to adapt or you're going to be left behind. Nick Saban could have yet another national championship by the end of the 2022 season with this reloaded Alabama football team. 